If I had to characterize the current car era with one sound, it would be the whine of a turbocharger. From pickup trucks to family sedans to crossovers, it seems like every vehicle segment has gone turbo these days. For the added performance and increased fuel economy this latest generation of turbocharged engine offers, they're really hard to beat. Sports cars, even those with a long history of naturally aspirated engines, have followed the trend, which is why the Ford Mustang that you see here isn't hiding a V8 engine under the hood. Instead, it's got a turbocharged 2.3 liter four, and I'm about to find out if it's worth a damn. How does it look? It's funny, over the last year I've had several non-car people note to me that they can't tell the difference between a Mustang and a Camaro anymore. I can't go that far, but I will say the latest Mustang design seems to have followed the same sleek, aerodynamically efficient path as its Chevy rival. In total, I think this fastback shape looks great in bright red over those dark wheels. Ground hugging and fast looking even while sitting still. How's the storage? So as you can see, the shape of the aperture is a little bit limiting, but once you get in there, there's actually kind of a lot of space. The Mustang trunk measures out to being only a little bit smaller than a Toyota Camry's, which means that it's quite a bit bigger than a Camaro's, which is key. I appreciate that the two big cup holders are offset to the right to make a little space for my arm, though it's less important in this automatic transmission equipped car. The big bin further back is perfect for storing a phone and the small rubberized tray in front of the shifter is perfect for keys or coins. There's not a lot of space for storage overall, but what there is has been cleverly optimized considering the coupe's interior dimensions. Is it roomy? Roomy isn't the right word, but Mustang has always been adequate for the big and tall set, and this one is no exception. The front seat offers a comfortable driving position even for me, and far better visibility than that other pony car. The back seats, not so much. How does the interior feel? So when I first got into this car, which is actually pretty loaded up, I was impressed with the striking design and the interesting material choices. But the longer I'm in here, the more I notice these big areas of hard feeling cheap black plastic. I also don't really love the toggle switches, especially this hazard light one, which I've accidentally turned on about six times. Is it well equipped? This Mustang is the EcoBoost premium model, which adds about $6,000 to the price, but also a lot of content. Leather seats that are heated and cooled, dual zone climate control, the ambient lighting package with illuminated sills, XM radio, and SYNC 3. None of that makes the car better to drive, but it will make it easier to live with if you're considering this as a commuter car. How's the infotainment system? I actually find SYNC 3 to be a vast improvement over the outgoing system, with easy to use functionality and a very clear interface. The style of graphics seems odd and old school, which kind of dulls the fact that the software is smarter than before. Is it a good daily driver? The Mustang is actually a surprisingly good daily driver for a coupe and a pony car, especially with the EcoBoost engine. There's not really any lag to the turbo, as I've talked about, which makes things like merging on the highway and making passing maneuvers and the sort of day-to-day -day performance things that you need to have happen very easy to accomplish. And I would say, as much as I would get mine with a six-speed manual transmission, the six-speed automatic transmission does make it a painless car to commute in. Um, when you're in the D mode, not in the sport mode for the transmission programming, everything is pretty laid back. You can get into the power and get what you need, but without uh, having the car feel edgy or over caffeinated at all. Is it fun to drive? <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, so I've selected the S on the automatic transmission, which indicates sport mode, and that really ups the ante in terms of the fun to drive factor for this car. Even though this is the four cylinder version, this EcoBoost engine is pretty powerful, you know? And there's not a lot of turbo lag so that when you get into it, especially when you've got the transmission set to sport mode, you can really get this car to kick, which is awesome because it is a Mustang at the end of the day. And you don't buy it to be extremely practical, you buy it because, you know, it's good looking and it's fun. So I, it, it does satisfy that basic requirement for me. The steering is pretty good. It's, it's a little bit lighter, even in set to sport mode uh, than I would like it to be and not quite so full of feedback. But, you know, the car turns pretty quickly and you, it can definitely keep up with some of your favorite roads. How's the fuel economy? The window sticker says the four banger Ford will get up to 32 miles per gallon on the highway, but I didn't come close to that. In fact, after about 200 miles of 90% highway driving, the trip computer was reading closer to 24 MPG, which is actually lower than the EPA city rating. Maybe I was too hot on the throttle all of the time, but my guess is you'll have to stay off boost a lot if you hope to see the econ numbers printed on the window sticker. How much is it? The Mustang EcoBoost starts under $26,000, and it's just over $31,000 for this premium trim. With the automatic trans and a few other options, the actual window sticker here is $34,675. I could probably live without some of the bells and whistles, and an EcoBoost Fastback carefully optioned to about $28,000 seems like a hell of a bargain. What are the negatives? Well, the fuel economy isn't nearly as good as you might expect from the Eco Mustang, that's for sure. But I think the biggest downside of the EcoBoost is less straightforward than that. To me, uh, Mustang just feels correct with a V8 engine. So as good as this turbo motor is, tradition really pulls at me to want the bigger engine under the hood. Who should buy it? Practically speaking, anybody who likes the look, feel, or performance of Ford's Mustang should at least test drive the EcoBoost. There are a lot of people who are less hung up on the V8 thing than I am, and for them, the combination of a responsive engine and a really playful car could hit exactly the right note. Oh, sorry about that, I had to change my shirt. If you guys like this Why Buy video, you should leave us a comment and tell us why and how. Uh, subscribe to our channel, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, and follow us on motor1.com.